There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. How would it make you feel if you launched a blog and it earned over six figures in three short years? The skeptics, they all say, it's not possible. But she did it, and so can you. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. I'm not quite sure when I first met Kate Kordsmeyer. It has to be well over eight years ago, if not more, and we geeked out over our common fascination with all things money. But from the very moment that I met her, I knew she was one smart cookie, and no matter what she did, she was going to be so super successful. I watched her build this really, really successful and profitable freelance travel writing business. She wrote for some of the top publications, every magazine you can think about she has written for. And then all of a sudden she just stopped and launched her blog and business, Root and Revel. And I was thinking, hmm, I wonder what she's up to now. I mean, if anyone's going to be successful, I thought it's got to be Kate. And here we are four years later, she's earning well over six figures and proving all the skeptics wrong, including herself. There are lots of people that talk about earning six figures from a business or from a blog, but I'm here to tell you that I know for a fact that these numbers are true when it comes to Root and Revel. But I had to know from Kate, how can you start today and follow in her footsteps? Is it still feasible to earn six figures from a blog? We're talking about a subject that There is a lot of discussion about this idea of of blogging and making money. What would you say is, in your opinion, like the biggest myth about blogging and making money? (laughs) That it you can't have both. Like basically, that you know, most people think it was somebody asked me, What do you do for a living? When I say I have a blog, I think what they hear is I'm a stay-at-home mom. (laughs) <laughs> who right. has like this little hobby where I'm like, oh, and I like, you know, post pictures of my food and stuff. Right. And you're like, no, no, I'm actually like a serious businesswoman. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, some of this is my issue and not theirs, but I find myself getting very defensive and like trying to explain to people 
even when they're not asking like, no, listen, okay, it's a blog, (laughs) but really I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur and I've created this six figure business. Um, and it's not like I'm just sitting in my PJs all day hanging out. Right. Exactly. I think, I think that's great. I love, I love, uh, I love the the idea of, you know, that you feel like you have to defend yourself because it's so funny. Like when people ask me what I do, I'm like, I don't know. I do a lot of different things. It's kind of all around money, but, but who knows? But it's interesting how that, that idea of like, what do you do? Like brings up so many emotions in all of us, particularly if it's like in a field where we feel like there's some sort of friction, Mm -hmm. uh, like blogging. But I wanted to ask you, you know, there's so many blogs out there, just like there are so many different podcasts out there. And I'm curious, like, what do you think about blogs that have been around for a while, but maybe aren't making any money? Like, what are what are they doing wrong or what are they not doing right, I guess, is probably the better question. <laughs> well, if you've been blogging for a while and you're not making any money, I think one of two things is happening. Um, one is you're not trying to make any money. You know, you're not doing any monetization strategies. Um, and it is just something that you're doing like for fun and that's fine. Um, but if you are trying to make money from it, even if it's not your full-time job, um, and you're still not, I think a lot of people give up too easily or like Mm. take one swing. And if it doesn't work, you know, they go back to the dugout and it's like, Oh, I, I joined the Amazon affiliate program and I put a link in a blog post, but I don't make any money from it. So affiliate marketing isn't going to work. Um, <laughs> kind of thing is like, I hear that all the time from my coaching clients is, you know, they've just like barely dipped their toe in the water and then they're very easily discouraged and think like, all right, well, I, you know, I don't know what else to do. Because at the at the end of the day, it's 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 a business like like anything, right? I mean, it's it's a lot of time and effort into it, and I think it's easy maybe to get sucked into the, uh, especially all the blogs that talk about how much money they're making. There's this fantasy that a that's easy, uh, and b that everybody's going to be at that that level of income when those aren't necessarily true. I mean, you really got to put some like sweat equity into this. Yes, a hundred percent. It is so much more work than I ever thought it would be. And I didn't go in totally naive thinking like, oh, I'll just, you know, take a picture on my iPhone and slap up a blog post and like the money will just start pouring in. But there's just so much more strategy involved and there's so many things you can do. I think that's another reason that maybe bloggers, um, who have been doing it a while, but aren't making any money is like, they're in this state of analysis paralysis of just like, I don't know what to focus on. I don't know where to put my time. There's so many, you know, people talking about sponsored content or affiliate marketing or ads or creating a course or doing a podcast or MLMs or, you know, all these different things, um, one-on-one coaching. And they're just like, where, I don't even know where to start. And so they don't, and they just sit there and kind of keep spinning their wheels, either doing what they had been doing that wasn't working or like almost just giving up on their blog and not really posting and not really doing much of anything at all. Yeah, so true. And I know the backstory of of your story. And I know that you started out as a journalist and that last year was probably, if not hopefully this year, but was your biggest blog growth year. I'd love to know like what changed your mind from being a successful journalist into like, I think this blog thing could actually be a legitimate business for me. Yeah, such a good question. There were a lot of things happening in my personal life and with my health that made me reevaluate what I was doing as a, I was a food and travel writer for magazines. So I spent all of my time traveling the world and eating amazing food, which was an incredible (laughs) life, but it's really hard on your body. Um, So Partly it was because of that, but I never would have switched to blogging. You know, I thought about, well, maybe I'll go into PR or maybe I'll, you know, do marketing somewhere. Maybe I'll finally go work for somebody else because I've 
pretty much always been self-employed and I was trying to come up with other things. And I started reading these income reports on the blog Pinch of Yum. And they're, you know, basically just a food blog. They just mostly post recipes and they were making over $30,000 a month from their wow. blog. And I was just like, what? I had no <laughs> idea that kind of money was possible. And so I started looking more into it. And then I took a couple courses myself. And then I was like, all right, this is, I'm going to do this. This perfectly aligns with like what's happening in my life and my skill set. And um, I just took the plunge. And I will say that I think one of the big differences between um, my experience and a lot of other people's is that I started a blog 100% as a business decision. Like it was going to be a part of my business. I wasn't sure if I would be able to make it a full-time thing or, um, you know, how it was going to look exactly, but it was never going to be just like a passion project or a hobby. I was looking at monetizing from day one. Were there times in that journey of when you were just starting the blog, even till today, where you thought like, okay, this is too much. Like I, I can't do it. Or were you always oh, just yeah. like, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Oh yeah. The doubt creeps in a lot. So the first um, like six months or so, it was okay that I wasn't making any money. Like I didn't put a lot of pressure on it because I was still freelancing part-time. So I still had, you know, some income from that job and I was just getting it started. And so I didn't really put that much pressure on it. But after the six month mark, and I just loved doing it so much, and I didn't want to freelance anymore. And so when I started being like, all right, I need to make this my full time thing. How can I do this? That like six to 18 month mark, there were a lot of days in there that I thought, this is too hard, or this, there's too much to do. I'll never get it all done. Or, um, and I think so many other bloggers can relate to that and also feel that like around that two year mark where you just want maybe one to two year mark where you just want to say like, okay, it's not, maybe you're making some money, but it's not enough yet. And I think most blogs fail because people give up at that point. And yes, I just was so sure that I could do it. And I just really wanted it so bad that I kept going. And it was like my first year of blogging, I think I made like around $5,000 or something. It was like, uh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> this is definitely not going to be my full-time thing. But then I pushed through and year two, I made $75,000. Um, so then it was like, oh, okay, this is it's working. Yeah, this is working. Let, let's see what year three is going to look like. And then I doubled that and made 150,000. And so by year three, I was like, all right, I'm convinced like the, you know, sky's the limit really. And, um, yeah, but to, to answer your original question, yes, there is a lot of doubt and fears and insecurities that came out in that first, you know, first two years, I guess. And just, powered through. <laughs> what like what got you through? Was it connecting to other bloggers or uh was it just, you know, kind of getting past your your mindset blocks? Well, some of it was getting past my mindset blocks and just really um I don't know, just like putting your head down and working and no like just trusting the process and knowing like I know this is possible. I know other people who are doing it, if they can do it, I can do it kind of thing. Um and then I will say that I started getting letters from like emails from readers saying oh, wow. how much they were helped by something I wrote or something I suggested and that really kept me going. Even if just if it was like one a month or something, I was just like, oh my God, I'm making a difference. And it just felt so good to really help people that I think that also kept me going. Yeah, the, that always is true with the podcast too. I try not to re read reviews at all. And if I happen to read a negative review, I, you know, I really have to do a lot of like, 
okay, so you get positive, you get negative, you know, I have to do a lot of self-talk. But when you hear from people uh, that something genuinely helped them in their life or helped them achieve a goal, I mean, it it makes, I think, all of the hard work so worth it. And it reconnects you to why you're doing the thing that you're doing, I think. Exactly. Yeah. It's just the best feeling in the world. And it's so easy to let those negative voices be louder. But when you really focus on like, there's always going to be haters, just, you know, let them be and just look at how many people love what you're doing. And even if they're silent followers, you know, there's people that always open your emails or always um, come back to the blog or comment on your Instagram post or something. I mean, I guess that's not really a silent um, <laughs> commenting, but um you know, it's just like there are you. There are little ways that you can see that you're making a difference um, in people's lives, and that for sure was my why. Yeah, that's so great. Well, let's do a little I, a little money making blogging one hundred and one because <laughs> I think that you threw out a lot of terms when we started the podcast. But what are some of the ways that people make money from a blog? So I would say the three main ways that people make money from blogging is using advertising, like display ads on their blog, um, partnering with brands and doing sponsored content or um, different campaigns. It could be just on social media, et cetera. Um, and then affiliate marketing. Okay. So those are the, those are just the main ways that people make money. I think those are the like most popular ways. And there are, of course, a lot of other things you can do. I mentioned like some people do one-on-one coaching or, you know, offer services more like that. A lot of people are now getting into the course world where they're maybe selling digital products, whether it's like a course or a workshop or um, eBooks and that kind of thing. So there's that. I mean, there's so many different ways you can add, you know, adding a podcast and obviously you don't have to have a blog to have a podcast, but that's another revenue stream. And so there's lots of different ways. I think the most successful blogs have a lot of different revenue streams and don't rely on just one way of making money. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I ironically got a few questions from listeners about blogging and I thought it would be fun. There's three of them. I thought it would be fun to dive into them if you're up for it. Yeah, let's do it. So the first one comes from Jerry, and we kind of touched this already, but he says, how do I know when it's time to go full-time on your blog and quit the nine-to-five? I've been building a blog on the side, making about $500 to $1,000 a month income, but really want to make it my full-time gig, but I am really nervous. Any thoughts on how I should think about this? Yeah, such a good question. I mean, I think the answer is going to be different for everybody because obviously we all have different, you know, budgets and expenses and responsibilities. And so, you know, somebody who, and like, what's your current salary? Are you trying to replace $1,000 a month or $10,000 a month? And so you have to think of your personal um, situation. But I will say, like, I do think there is something to um, mindset and also like almost putting the pressure on like I have to make this work when you have something else you could fall back on. It's easy to just be like, well, I can't get to that right now or, you know, it can kind of go to the back burner. So not that I would suggest anybody quit their job before they are really ready and if especially like have savings and, you know, a plan in place. but. Um, when I decided to go full-time with Root and Revel, I was not making enough money, but I just kept saying like, I know I could do it if I just could, if I could just find the time to get these tasks done. And I, I didn't have that time when I was still working my other jobs. So eventually I just took a leap of faith. I had, you know, a solid savings and a plan set up if things didn't work out. And I just did it. And, you know, fortunately it did work out, but I think a lot of it was because I had to make it work. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news 
Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. We've got an Ask Shauna, and this one comes from Julie, and Julie says, Hi, Shauna. I'm a big fan of the show, and honestly, I've been inspired to start my own business as a result of the Millennium Money podcast. I've got everything set up, got my business and marketing plan, and I'm ready to rock and roll. But I'm curious, would you suggest that I start a formal business like an S-Corp or an LLC right now? I've read a lot of articles, and honestly, I'm just confusing myself at this point. Thank you so much for all your help. Julie, I hear you, my friend. (laughs) I can't wait to hear more about your new business venture. And I know it is so confusing trying to figure out or even decipher what you should do, what you shouldn't do. It's just like a giant mess of decisions and no real concrete path forward, at least when you're first starting. And I just want to say first, I'm not a CPA. I know a lot about taxes and business structure as a CFP. But I'm going to give you my in my opinion advice, and then I really would suggest that you talk to a CPA who can know more about the business you're starting, know more about your income, your expenses, all of those sorts of things to give you a more well-rounded piece of advice. I think that outside of the gate, just when you're starting your business, it makes sense to keep yourself as a sole proprietor status and file what's called a DBA, doing business as, so you can get your bank account, all of those other things if you need a tax, sales tax license, whatever those things are for your particular business. I just don't think that it makes sense to pay heaps of filing fees and all sorts of nonsense to get an S-Corp or LLC set up when you haven't even started making money. So there's no pennies in the door yet, and I'm just a bit cautious Having started in my first business when I was 19 in college, I'm just cautious about spending money before you make money. And I know that you can really get kind of down this rabbit hole where it just feels like that's what you're supposed to do. But I always encourage people, like, just take a pause because there's 
there's a mental piece to it. And, and again, I get that where you think you need to have this formal business structure or you're not a legitimate business. And that is just BS in my opinion, especially from the beginning. But once you start making money, then yes, the liability protection and all the other benefits from a formal business structure, they really make sense depending again, how much you make, et cetera. That's where the CPA comes in and could really be helpful. So I think just stay lean and mean, at least until you test the viability of your business. When you see, okay, my my target market, the people that I'm trying to sell to or whatever the nature of your business might be, they're actually interested. They're actually buying my products. I actually have some income in the door. Then you can go, okay, now is the time to formally set this up because I know this idea is going to work at least in some form. But if you do that from the beginning and you start spending a lot of money before you make money, then if that business venture doesn't pan out, then you've just lost a lot of money. So hopefully, Julie, that gives you a little bit of words of advice and some food for thought. And we've got another question from Crystal, and she says that she wants to create a website blog. She says, can you recommend... Any designers or companies for me to work with? Basically, how do I get it started? I work full time, have three small kids, so I don't have a lot of time, Mm -hmm. but I want to create something good. There are a million posts on how to start, but no real recommendations on how you actually do that. Okay. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can go about this. And depending on whether or not you would prefer to pay somebody to do it or maybe just pay like around $100 and buy a nice premium theme for WordPress, um, I think is going to be a personal preference. But when you're just getting started, I don't think you need to spend a lot of money on getting your website designed. You can spend like 75 bucks, get a self-hosted WordPress account, buy a premium theme, and then do it yourself really easily. I mean, especially if you have any real tech experience. I mean, I wouldn't recommend this for maybe an older generation or somebody who doesn't spend a lot of time on computers. But think if you're like 50 or younger in this day and age, like you're probably tech savvy enough to um, customize a WordPress theme. And you can just start really simply um, in the beginning and really all the time. But people aren't coming to your blog because it looks pretty. They're coming to your blog for the content. So not that you want your blog to not look good, but it can be really simple and people will still stick around if the content is good. That's such a good point because I think we can easily get trapped in the hamster wheel of it has to be perfect. It has to have all these bells and whistles. And so you end up investing all this money up front and you've not even made any money on your website or your blog yet. You've not even tested whether you could gather an audience. And so I like that permission to do it inexpensively, but just focus on good content. Yeah, absolutely. And another good thing to mention just along those same lines is you may not like blogging. Once you get started, you may decide like, oh, this isn't for me. I don't like writing or I don't enjoy creating content or being like the, you know, having such like a public persona if you're on social media and that kind of thing. So before you sunk a ton of money into something like test it out, you know, at least give it a few months of actually doing the work to decide, is this right for me? Great point. And our last question is from Sarah. And I feel like I can relate to Sarah a lot. She says, I feel like there are so many blogs out there. Why should I start one? And yet I feel passionate about blogging. I'm a great cook. I have a lot of family recipes that I want to share, but do you have any tips on how I can stand out so I could actually make an income doing this and stand out from all those other blogs? Yes. Another really good question. I get this all the time as well. So Sarah, I would say, first of all, it's cheesy, but there is <laughs> only one you and only you have your unique perspective and experience and opinions and skills and Um, blogging is really cool because people are, your readers are connecting with you. Um, not just, you know, like, a a food and wine.com. They're not really connecting with anybody there. They're coming because of other reasons, but with a blog, 
um, who you are really matters. And so, yeah, there may be a bajillion other food blogs out there, but there's only one that's written by you and has your unique perspective. Um, that being said, I would not recommend just starting a general food blog. I think in the beginning, it's really important to niche down and come up with a blog that really sets you apart from the other food blogs based on the type of content you're going to deliver. So it could be that, you know, maybe you're a celiac and it's a gluten-free blog, or maybe you're a restaurant chef and it's like how you can get restaurant quality meals at home or, you know, maybe just be specific, right? Like, and I think that that's sort of a fear is like, if we're, if we're too specific, then we're going to alienate a certain population, but that's being that specific with blogging, it it helps attract the audience you want, right? Yes, a hundred percent. And there are huge audiences for really niche um, genres of things. Like, so you'd be surprised. And I think one of the best pieces of advice I got and now give to people all the time is like, you can't be everything to everyone. And that's okay. Um, You know, my blog really focuses on like natural, holistic health and living. So there are some people that are just like very conventional and Western medicine and that kind of thing. And they are going to think I'm just like some crazy hippie. And (laughs) that's okay. They're not my target audience. But somebody who is maybe starting to see that there's value in doing things with a more holistic approach may come to my blog and go, oh, this is really speaking to me. I want to learn more about this. Um, So I think you just have to be okay with the fact that You may turn some people away. That's okay. That's just giving up more space for your target audience. Good point. And then how do you balance, what advice do you give someone on how to balance that personal story that you're sharing through the blog versus actual constructive advice or tips or whatever it may be? Yeah. Oh, such a good question. Um, So I think this also comes from my journalism background, but every time I write a post, even if it's a really personal story, I ask myself, how is this going to help the reader? What value am I providing the reader? And sometimes it may just be, they may connect with my personal story and it may resonate with them and make them feel good, um, make them, you know, not feel alone or something like that. But usually it's like, I'm sharing my experience, but then I'm providing actionable advice that people can then apply to their own lives. So it's not just, here's my story of how I healed PCOS naturally. It's, this is what happened to me. And now here's how, if you can relate to this, how you can apply these same strategies to your life and potentially reverse your PCOS. Mm, Interesting. Yeah. I like that approach. And I think, uh, you know, some of the best blogs that I read do that really well and and balance that really well. And I would imagine it's a little bit of a trial and error to figure that out. But uh, that's, I think, some of the fun of having a blog is you can try out different ways of dispensing information and see what the audience likes. Yeah, exactly. And your audience may ask to hear more about your personal life and your personal story, or they may feel like, okay, I'm getting enough of, you know, a connection where I feel like I know you or that I trust you and you have that, that kind of trust built with them, but, um, they may not need to know like your dog's name. Um, so it's just, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, find that balance. But generally speaking, I think it's better to be more vulnerable and open while still always like providing value. You're not just sharing your story because you're so interesting and everybody just needs to know everything about you. And, um, you know, I think blogging can kind of be narcissistic if you let it. Um, so always keeping the reader's Um, interest at, you know, top of mind. For sure. And even just in the short period of time that you have 
had your blog, Root and Revel, and I've grown it, and I've watched your growth. You've created this course, the Six Figure Blog Academy. Tell me a little bit about like what you teach in that course, because there's so many different courses out there on blogging, and I've personally been through your course and can attest that it is great, great quality, and there's so much information in there that I have not seen in other blogging courses. So tell me a little bit about like the evolution of this. Yeah. So I, I felt like I started reading those income reports, like I said, of other bloggers before I started my blog. And so I always knew that it was something that I wanted to do as well, um, because it's really nice to be able to give back and to show people like this is a legit career and it could really change your life for the better. Um, And so I started doing the income reports. And from there, I would get so many questions and emails from people. And um, I started doing some like one-on-one coaching and consulting with people trying to help them get their blogs off the ground. And, um, or maybe they were already off the ground, but you know, they were just stuck and not growing and not making money. And so I loved doing that so much, but it's hard, you know, there's only one me and there's only so many hours in a day. So I needed to come up with a way that I could help more people. Um, and of course, courses like online courses like this are such a great option for that. Um, and the income from courses that I could earn is, you know, so much more scalable than one-on-one sure. coaching. So I started putting this course together in the spring of 2018 and it's now July, 2019. So in that time I had a baby and I took maternity leave and came back and I just was like, I just feel so called to do this. And I just love talking business and um, strategy and sharing ideas and that kind of thing. So I finally finished the course a couple of months ago. We had a beta program that you were a part of and a bunch of other students as well, you know, tweaked a few things and now it is out in the world finally. Um, and yeah, I think the biggest thing is like, just, I have been there. I did this myself. I'm not just somebody who's like creating courses about blogging, who's never had a blog. Um, which I feel like there's a shocking amount of people that do that. Yes. <laughs> um, or that haven't had success with their blogs. Maybe they have one, but um, so it's really like, I feel like I've just done the legwork. I've done all the trial and error and experiments. And um, now I've come up with this strategy and I'm just sharing my like literally step-by-step system. We have at the very start of the course, there's a 99 step roadmap and it, is just exactly what I did in order to create a six figure blog. Um, and then of course the, there's eight modules and each of those go into way more detail about those 99 steps. Yes. All the nitty gritty. Well, I'd love just last question, no matter where somebody is on their blogging journey, if they're just starting out or they feel like they're a pro, what's one piece of advice that you wish you knew before starting your blog that you think is invaluable now that everybody should know about? Oh, man. One piece of advice that everyone should know. Oh, I'm kind of (laughs) stumped. Maybe that's how hard it is. (laughs) It is. Um, I feel like I'm thinking way too specific. I mean, maybe it's even just the simple idea that it's possible. Well, that's exactly, it's funny you say that. That's exactly what I was thinking was like, I just want people to know, like, if I can do this, so can you, I am not special. Um, I don't have, you know, anything that you don't have or couldn't learn or outsource or figure out. I love that Marie Forleo quote about everything is figure outable. Um, And yeah, I just think it is so possible and it's a lot of work. Like, I'm not going to lie. This is not a get rich quick scheme, Um, but it does give you that freedom and flexibility and fulfillment. Like you're really turning your passion into purpose and a profitable business. And it's just life-changing. Purpose and profit. Love those two words. 
So Kate, tell everybody where they can go to find out more about you and to sign up for the course if they're interested. Great. So my blog is rootandrevel.com and you can just check out the blog there. If you're interested in the course, um, just go to rootandrevel.com slash six uh, six FBA, which stands for six figure blog Academy. Um, we have enrollment open until July 30th, 2019, close the doors at midnight. Um, and then I'm sure we'll open again later this year. Um, but if you want the chance to join now, then, um, now's your chance. (laughs) Thanks so much for checking out this episode and a big thanks to our sponsors that make this show possible. Remember to subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you never miss an episode. But before you leave, I want to empower you to embrace where you are today, the good and the not so good. And remember, nothing lasts forever. Just keep taking small steps every day and remember how awesome you truly are.